Back to Minitab 17. This time we're going to learn to use Minitab to make a scatter plot. So here I have the heights and weights of some seven-year-old boys. I want to see if they generally trend together. If as the boy grows taller, he also gets heavier. That would make a lot of sense, right? And I just want to see a graphical representation of those heights and weights. <coughs> now, let's make a scatter plot. A scatter plot is used when we want to look at two different variables for the same sample. So the heights and weights of the same seven-year-old boys. This height goes with that weight. Those are the same boy. The row two is the same boy for height and weight. Row three is the same boy for height and weight. So let's go to our graph and we would like to make a scatter plot. It's actually the very first one up there. We're going to make a simple scatter plot, which is already highlighted, so I'll say OK. And now I have to tell it the y and the x variables. In general, we use our x variable to be the independent, or the cause, and our y variable to be the dependent, or the effect. Here it's hard to say. Does your weight go up because you grow? Or does your height go up because your weight goes up? I, I suppose you could make an argument either way. Let's say maybe as you grow taller, your weight also then increases because of it. So your weight could depend on your height. So your weight is the dependent variable, and it should be the y variable. The x variable, the independent variable, is the height. And we're going to say OK. Now we get a graph. And each of these dots represents one of the boys. So there's a boy who, if I leave it here, it'll actually tell me. There's a boy who is 49.6 inches tall and weighs 56.33 pounds. Excellent. Let's improve this graph a little bit. For example, my label height is fine, but I should indicate the units. So if I double click height, I could go here, and I'm going to click behind it, and I'm going to put parentheses IN so that I know that that's in inches. You should always indicate your units on a graph. Similarly for my weights. Let me double click where it says weight and then change this so that it says weight LB for pound. And I could give this a better title. I'll double click the title and I'll change this to comparison of heights oops, and weights of seven year old boys. OK. And I notice, by the way, looking at this graph, what do I see? I see that absolutely, as boys, the taller the boys are when they're seven, the more they weigh. Generally, that height and weight seem to trend together. There's an upward trend. As one goes up, the other goes up. In fact, this looks like it could be pretty close to being linear. There might be a line that really fits that data very, very well. And that's something I can see in a scatter plot. It's a visual way for me to look at how two variables are related to each other. Let's take another example. Here I've got 30-year-old females. I've measured their heights in inches and their vital capacity, which is how much their lungs can hold, measured in liters. And I want to know, it would make sense to me that taller women should have bigger lungs, therefore they should have a higher vital capacity. So does vital capacity depend on your height? That would make a lot of sense to me. So let's try and make a scatter plot to make that decision. So I'm going to say graph scatter plot. Again, a simple scatter plot. I'll say OK. But now I want to think about what is my y variable and my x variable. Well, think of the question I asked. Does the vital capacity of the woman depend on how tall she is? So the dependent variable is vital capacity. It may depend on height. So that's going to be my y variable. Vital capacity, VC, is going to be my y variable. My independent variable is the height. The woman's height doesn't depend on how big her lungs are. Not by the way I phrased the question. So now I'm going to say OK. And again, I get a scatter plot. I could again fix these. Instead of saying HT30F, I'll double click it and I'll make it say height, parentheses, IN for inches. And over here, instead of saying VC30F, which was just the name of my column, I'll double click it and I'll write vital capacity and in parentheses put L, because that's measured in liters. Up here I could change the title as well. Vital capacities versus heights of 30 year, that's not how you spell year, year old females. And again, let me look at this graph. 
Is there a trend? Yes. It's not as nice and tight as it was with the heights and the weights of the boys, but definitely my lowest heights also seem to be generally my lowest vital capacities. My higher heights seem to get higher vital capacities. So, eh, it's hard to say for sure, but I would say, yeah, it would seem to me there's an upward trend here, that it looks like as a person is taller that they do indeed have a larger vital capacity, although this, my tallest person, does not have the highest vital capacity. So that is clearly not always the case. But it does give me an idea. By the way, like other graphs, I could double click on these dots and I could change them if I don't want them to be circles. I could make them be squares and if I didn't want them to be blue, I could make them be pink and if I didn't want, I could change the size and make them bigger. There's all kinds of things I can do. Look at that. Now they're pink squares instead of blue circles. I can do anything I want of that nature. And when I'm all done, I can save this graph like I've saved other graphs. I would go to File, Save Graph As. I could save it as a mini-tab graph, but if I really want to use it in Word, PowerPoint, Blackboard, anywhere else, I'm going to save it as a JPEG or a PNG or a TIFF, but a JPEG is probably the most common. I would just save it as a JPEG file. And then I'd give it a title and I'd be good. I'm not actually going to save it, but that's how we can make scatter plots in Minitab.